Have you ever wondered about which type of jobs can a chemical engineer get in the workforce? Coming up next. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel in which we discuss your chemical engineering life as a student and a professional. In this video, what I want to do is to explore the common job titles or job roles that you may encounter for chemical and process engineers. There are many jobs that may or may not require you to be a actual chemical engineer or that may sound for a mechanical engineer or may sound for civil engineers or maybe for certain type of engineering or special degrees but the great thing on chemical engineering is that you can eventually fit on those job roles for instance the most common one quality engineer or maybe environmental engineer or maybe even pharmaceutical engineer and guys what i want to show you here is essentially that you can have a lot of areas or industries or companies in which you may end up as a chemical or process engineer. And before we continue, what I want to say a lot here is that there are many companies which may or not use the same terminology. So it will be very hard to say that a, let's say a junior analyst can be compared to a senior engineer or a design engineer can be compared to an operational one. Even process engineer can be very tricky because what you will see later in life is that there are a lot of tasks that can or cannot be done depending on the company, depending on the process, on the job culture, on your level. Sometimes you will have a lot of senior responsibilities, but because there is no space for you as a senior engineer, you will stay still as a junior engineer, even though you are doing things that are very common for senior engineers. Talking of which, I want to take very quickly a overview on the several hierarchies or let's say levels of responsibilities that you may encounter once again it really depends a lot on the type of company you are so if you're in consulting or maybe you are in manufacturing or maybe you are in a very global company that will be different from a local regional one so try to be open-minded that there is no fixed way to think about it and that's great because when you say process engineering is about all the magic that encloses or has around it. So let's talk about the different levels on the hierarchy that you may encounter before we even continue with the job titles and job positions. So you can very quickly understand whether it's an entry level position or a midterm position or more advanced position or maybe even the top tier position in the company. So first things first, the very most common one will be intern, internship, co-op, or maybe thesis, someone that's doing some analysis or research, but it's maybe not properly hired as a full-time employee. The second one, which will be the most common one, will be an entry-level position, is either junior engineer or analyst or maybe associate. And then, if you are lucky and work very great and they see you working and there is availability, as time passes by and as you have been trained, you will most likely end up in a senior position, having a team working for a greater goal. You have maybe one person, two, three, maybe even 10 persons under your charge. Typically after senior position, you will encounter more advanced positions. They can be director, manager, or maybe even C-level. When I talk about C-level, it's the typical CEO, but not only for the central executive officer, but it will be central uh, operational chief or central uh, maintenance chief officer. So there are a lot of ways in which you can categorize those. Typically when you talk about C-level, those are most likely the highest on the ranking. People that has been working already, that they know about the industry, that they know how to treat people, how to work with teams, how to achieve goals, how companies work. And before we continue to the actual job titles, I want to explain a little bit on the different names that we're going to be throwing around. The most common one, as you can imagine, will be engineer. There's a lot of things that will end up with engineer and that will be the most common one to search. But you can still find out scientist, you can still find designer, you can still find collaborator, you can still find supervisor, chief, boss, uh, whatever it sounds like may not be related to engineering, but in many cases these companies are old school companies or companies that do not require per se a engineering degree, but are typically getting engineers. So 
don't try to force engineering on the title. I know many of you guys want to ensure an engineering position, but this is not about the name. What you want to do is, of course, engineering, and that will be typically in the job description, so ensure to check out the typical roles that an engineer does. So guys, let's get started with the list. Number one will be the most common one, and no, I'm not talking about chemical engineering. It's very rare for post job positions or postings to search for specifically the title of a chemical engineer. Why? Because chemical engineers can be either entry level, they can be a senior level, or I don't know, it just sounds off, meaning that we already know that there are chemical engineers, but the positions can be named properly. For instance, process engineering, which will be the very first one and the most common one that you may want to check out if you are into actual processes. A process engineer is the engineer which is in charge of the process. He will typically check out on the chemical plant. The likelihood of a process engineer not being directly in the equipment or not going at least once a week to the actual floor and check out machines, that's very low. A process engineer must be in the process. So personal story here, guys. I used to be a process engineer for the polymer and textile industry. I really love it. It's a lot of action, a lot of production, and the idea of always having the process within specifications, constant improvement, and of course, keeping the quotas of production is just lovely. A lot of challenges and a lot of action. One drawback on process engineering will be that, as stated before, you need to go always to the machines, talk with people, operators. It not always depends on you whether the product will be okay or not. So you may not like to have all this hassle with the process. A lot of people just love to be in the computer, writing reports, making analysis, which doesn't mean that process engineers do not do, but is also typical for the process engineer to go to the control panel, check out conditions, go and send material to the lab and start doing improvements in the process, change temperatures, pressures, pumps, management of the maintenance and all that. For entry level, I'm pretty sure that 60%, 70% that will be the typical job that you will end up searching. Other types of job roles that you may want to check out are production engineer, which as the name implies is focused on the production of the materials, not that much into process adjustment. As long as process specification are within limits, production engineer wants to produce more, more, more. Then we have R&D scientist or R&D engineer, which as the name implies is focused on research and development. Typically you will encounter this a uh, new age name such as innovation planner or innovation engineer, something related towards creating new stuff or modifying the process so it can produce another product. Process optimization engineer is also another very common one. And to be honest, optimization typically is a function of all the engineers. You want to always improve and optimize the process, but sometimes there's a position that literally is the only job they will do. They want to optimize processes, they want to optimize machines, unit operations, and all kind of processes. Product design engineer can be also related to R&D, or maybe there are companies that have these pre-reading instructions. So the process engine design engineer will simply design the specification. For instance, in the case of textiles, there were companies that will tell you, I need this, this, and this with certain compositions. And what we ended up doing was preparing the testing so we ensure that they were within specifications and of course started to adjust all the equipment so the client could get his request. Scale up engineer or scale up scientist or scale up technician, as the name implies, they are in charge of doing scale up projects. Either because there's a scale up coming soon or revamp or increase in the capacity of the plant or because they just want to be ensuring how they can scale up a process. Bioprocess chemist, bioprocess scientist, bioengineering or biotech or biotechnology engineer, all these sound very similar. And I'm not going to get that deep because of course they are different, but in the chemical engineering approach will be someone that knows about the bio or the biology going on. More likely the bioprocesses. So if you're into wastewater treatment, you will see that there will be a bioprocess engineer that knows how to treat all the bacteria, how to clean water in the bio phase. Because of course there's the physical phase and the chemical phase and the purification phase and all this going on. One of the most important ones yet 
typically underrated will be the SHE, sometimes Q, and I'm going to say why sometimes Q, is the Safety, Healthy, and Environment Engineer. Q stands for quality. Sometimes they just add up all these. This will be a multifunctional engineer. But the idea is to have someone that is focused in what we all don't like to be focused, which is safety, on being healthy, and taking care of the environment. When you're a production engineer, what you will typically hate is the SHE engineer coming for you and saying you that you're out of environment policies or that you're polluting a lot or that having certain engineer doing certain operation may not be the healthiest for him on the long run and so on. There's also the typical process automation engineer or controller engineer or process controller engineer. There's many names for this, but essentially what these type of engineers are doing is taking care of the process. And I know it sounds very abstract to take care of the process, but we are talking about the automation. So the equipment and all the levels, temperatures, controllers are working properly. That what we are seeing, for instance, the process engineer, what he is seeing in the computer is actually what's happening in the process. And this is a very important task. Actually, I would say that the chemical engineering curriculum does not contain so much information of this, which when you go to a chemical plant, you will see that this is like 30% of the process to have actually control and automation of it. Project management engineer, it's also an important one, which as the name implies, is someone that takes care into projects going on. And we need a engineer because of course there is a multidisciplinary area. You want an engineer that knows about the process, about the production, about the maintenance, about the control, about safety, healthy, about the accounting, logistics, sales. So these are very loved for the engineers. Every engineer overall wants to end up as a project manager, either chemical engineer, process engineer, mechanical, oil and gas engineers and all that. Why? Because typically it also pays off much more than the entry level or mid level engineering and you're getting more respect or more hierarchy in the structure. Because let's be honest guys, if you can control a group of people towards a single goal, that by definition is a great leader. As stated before, I say that SHE and sometimes Q are all round up, but to be honest, quality engineer is a engineering position that requires to be one by itself. And as the name implies, the quality engineers is going to be checking out that the process is getting product within specifications, but also they are in charge of getting allocated those products which may not be within specifications. Can they be recycled in the process? Or could they be sold on our place? What are the typical quality requirements that will end up in the final product? And of course, not exactly their role, but as a quality engineer, they may end up doing this type of lean manufacturing or continuous improvement towards the goal of decreasing the number of defects and always trying to be operational and within specifications. Material scientist or technician or material engineer, as the name implies, is someone that is in charge of the materials. Typically, material engineers are very unique because they can either be mechanical engineers that want to focus on materials, they focus more on the mechanical side, the stress and shear forces, or it's a chemical engineer that is also into materials, but he may or she may like more the idea of oxidation or the strain as well. So you will find this type of engineers looking for the material engineering role. And what do they do is work on materials typically because they work in a material company. So for instance, they are doing steel, they are doing metal, ceramics, plastics, all these are relevant for a material engineer. Maintenance engineering or maintenance chief controller or maintenance supervisor is the one that allows the company to have the machines rotating and having the most continuous process available through all the year. Because if we wait for machines to break up and destroy themselves and start going out of classification because the machines themselves, well, that will be no business for us engineers. We need maintenance engineers. To be honest, guys, the most likelihood is that those are mechanical engineers or electrical engineers, but you never know. I have heard about chemical engineers that are there because they are checking out the reactors, the 
heat exchangers, equipment that they saw in their silos. A utility engineer, as the name implies, is the one that is in charge of utilities. And remember, utilities are these things that service the plants, such as water, it can be clean water, process water, cooling water, waste water, nitrogen gas lines, clean air for the equipment that requires refrigerations. Costing engineer, they are the ones in charge of costing all the equipments. May they be either for maintenance, repairing, or buying a new equipment for the new acquisitions. Talking about unit operations, there may be also a unit designer or unit operation designer or a equipment design engineer. So these are the persons in charge of designing these equipments or properly getting those equipments because in real life, you may not end up doing the design. You just call your, I don't know, pump provider and ask them if they have the required pump for a certain process. You will not be the one designing the impeller sizing and all that. Of course, you need to know because the provider will most likely send you at least five models, 10 models, and you will be the one in charge of selecting the final ones. Process planner or planner engineer is the engineer in charge of planning everything within the production. So remember, as a process engineer or production engineer, you're not that much into the client. You have not that much contact with them. You're just producing. And the schedule is typically given by the planner engineer. So they tell you that you need to produce a certain amount of kilotons in, I don't know, maybe one week or two weeks. That will be the engineer telling you what to do. And you just ensure that it is within a specification as a process engineer. Process simulation engineer, that might be also very common, especially if you are in a consulting company or in a very huge company that are trying to improve within the computer. So you don't want to be changing all the conditions in the process and verify whether or not it will be working. What they do is essentially go in the computer, start simulating a lot of processes and verify whether or not it's convenient. I'm talking about process simulation. I do not talk about only Aspen Plus or HiSys. There are many processes that can be simulated and not only within the unit operation or process idea. You can be simulating piping, safety issues, sizing of equipment, the constructions for EPC. And that was it guys. I'm sorry to maybe bombard you with a lot of titles, job roles and all that, but I really think it's relevant, especially if you're looking for a job to know what are the jobs out there that you may want to check out. Please let me know guys, if you already have a job, what's your job title? And it will be great to be honest and say, what's the title and what you actually do? Because in some cases they will assign you to be, I don't know, maybe a process engineer. And what you do is actually planning engineering or you are a process engineer and what you do is actually more into the production side or the quality side. Or maybe you are into lean manufacturing and you ended up doing actual process engineering. So it will be very interesting to see what's the job title you have and what you are actually doing. It's not only for me, but also helps the community. So young engineers, maybe newcomers or uh, recently graduates can know what are the actual engineering jobs there, what do they do, and get a better idea on what's chemical and process engineering. And guys, if I forgot some titles that you think are relevant that I may have missed, please add them as well. Guys, that will be it. I hope that you learn at least one or two new roles that you may want to apply or check out at least that they exist and know what they do. And before we go, don't forget to subscribe, click on the notification bell, like the video, and we will see each other in the next one.